Hey, folks. It is 7 o'clock, and we are recording. Great. Thank you. Hang on one second. Let me, let me start off with our board norms, folks, uh, which is to maintain our focus, communicate respectfully, be present. Keep the board productive and effective and respect the agenda. And uh, ironically, I think uh, we don't have a changes to the agenda. So the first order of business is do you have any changes to the agenda? You've got to speak to all of us, not just to him. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, I would respectfully suggest that the board add an agenda item um, of an executive session at the end of the meeting. For a contract for now, for a town and principal hire. Okay. Right, so we'll call that new business. Great. Okay, and I think the first order of business is, is to go into an executive session. Correct. Okay. So I'll, I will make a motion. I move that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I'll second it. Any discussion? Seeing Sorry. none. I'm hard of hearing. Can you just speak up a little hard? Sure. Uh, I'll do my best. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none opposed, the motion carries unanimously. And the second motion, I motion to enter executive session with attorney Sean Tui and superintendent Bob Tebow under 1 BSA 313 1F for the purpose of receiving confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. I second it. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously, and uh, unfortunately, folks, we are now going to be in executive session. Okay, we're coming out of executive session, and uh, out of executive session, we have no action to take. So we'll now move on to our agenda item, Jamaica status update, and we're gonna start that with Bob. All right. Well, um, where were we the last time we met? <laughs> um, so uh, the last time we had a board meeting, we talked about the idea that the uh, teaching principal, uh, Monica, had uh, taken a position at Leland Gray as a sixth grade teacher. And we had one other staff member um, currently uh, under contract. Um, since that time, we have had the opportunity for that staff member to sign the contract. They get it issued in mid-April, and the staff have to return it by mid-May. Um, so the day after the contract were due, uh, confirmed with that staff member that they tend to not return. So currently, we have zero of two teachers in the building, classroom teachers. And I want to explain a little bit so everyone understands. There are still special, still a special educator. There's still a very part-time counselor, very part-time nurse, very part-time music, art, phys ed, all of those things, librarian that come here. Um, those people are either West River employees that are shared through the other West River schools or they're SU employees who are shared in uh, multiple schools. Um, but there were only two full-time teaching staff here and neither will be returning. Um, we posted the second position the day after, so that would have been on May 16th. And to this point, we still have zero applicants for either position. So obviously, that's concerning. It's just about June. Um, so it seemed like an important time for us to kind of update you guys as to what the situation was and begin to talk about some possible scenarios, um, answer any questions we can answer from, from the board, from the community. Um, I did take the opportunity with Monica to meet with families last week to kind of try to explain some of the similar uh, steps with them. Um, answered questions, we met for a little over an hour maybe, um, and tried to really get at what the concerns were that they had um, and what the possibilities might be if 
if something had to happen with the school. Um, one of the things I want to make sure that we're, we're talking about today, there's really two things happening simultaneously, all right? The, the district has been engaged in long-term planning since 2018 in a variety of settings and a variety of ways, committees going back and forth, studying different things, different ideas. Um, that process is still ongoing. Um, this conversation, this update, isn't about that. This conversation is about next year only. Um, I would describe it as a emergency situation with no applicants and two vacant positions. Um, and so for me, I'm looking for guidance as to how to proceed. Um, and I think the families in my conversation with them, and they can speak up at some point if they would like to confirm, they would also like to know what the plan is and what, what their options might be. Um, and the emphasis was on sooner rather than later for them. Um, so that's, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of where we are, um, just to do a quick stop there. I can get into what some options might be, but I don't know if I want to pause there for clarifying questions first, from anybody, either from the board or from the community, the chair. Sure. We'll do sure. Um, start with the board first. Any clarifying questions? No? All right. So, uh, a lot of folks out there. So, we will do our best to get to everybody on this. Uh, so, I'd like to limit it to two minutes. Uh, at least for the first go around. Obviously, if everybody gets their, their fair say, we can come back to folks. Uh, so I will start with two minutes for... And, and just, to re, just to restate, like really, if you just do questions on the first part that I've said so far, then we can sort of take it in chunks. And then right. that way people can... So exactly. If you ask a question that's like about the next part, can, if it's okay for me just to say, that's the next part, yeah. just so we can kind of keep it focused. So I want to make sure everyone yeah. understands <coughs> it one step at a time. Yeah, okay. Any questions on that? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so um, having we gone through a hiring process municipally, so I understand the challenges. Um, it obviously hasn't been that long. My question is, who takes the lead on that? Uh, who is it? I would have thought it was you, it your, your office. Okay, but you seem to be looking to the board <laughs> to give you an update on hiring. Maybe I misunderstood so that. I'm giving them the update that there are no people to interview or hire. And so that creates a challenge for me to figure out what do I do next with the with the students. The students here need to be educated in the fall. Right. They need to have staff here to do so. I'm just looking for guidance around what my next steps might be as superintendent. In the hiring process? Because isn't that, and i not being cute here, yeah, right? No. I'm thinking if there is any school in your district that had two openings, that would be critical in any school, two full-time openings. Correct. And you were at this stage, what, accelerated steps would you normally take yeah. and so, would you not do that here? So if I, so if we do have an opening in Townsend, just to give an example for a kindergarten teacher, there are also no applicants there, but there's also a principal there who is leading that effort. So I'm not as involved in that process. The reason I'm involved in this process is that the teaching principal is also one of the vacancies. So in theory, I would hire that person first and then they would then work to hire the rest of their staff. But I don't have any applicants for that either. And so that's the troubling part. So yes, I'm, I'm in charge of the search process, but there's, there's no process to really take part in because there's no applicants. Does that make sense? Not really. Because I'm not trying to be I, I, I We just did it yeah. for a critical function and there were challenges, but we researched how best to try to find qualified candidates for very a sophisticated position, not right. unlike that one. Right. And we took all those steps with our board. I, I guess that's, I'm just looking to hear, yeah. you know, that. Yeah. So we've, we've been to Job Fair in Northern Vermont, uh, the UVM put on this year, um, for, to look for applicants for positions. Um, we listed multiple places, um, school spring, applicant tracking, and I think they're cross posted on Indeed as well. Um, we don't have a big, like, recruitment team. We have a one HR person for the entire supervisory union. Um, but we've been out there trying to find people who are interested in doing it, and there just isn't. Newspapers. We don't, we don't, we typically aren't posting in newspapers because that's not where people are looking for those jobs. That's where we got ours. Oh, no Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Which newspaper? Uh, local Reformer, or? Banner. Reformer, Banner, Commons, um, Journal, and yeah. 
for the challenge. I mean, one of the things that's unique about schools is that there's a cycle. And I don't mean to hijack, so yeah, no, 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 we'll no. stop it. I think it's this. a good conversation. There's a unique there's a unique cycle to education hiring that typically happens in the you know, administrators will typically be first in the December to March window, and then teachers kind of in the March to May window, and then it dries up because the people who have found positions or people who are looking for positions have already found positions. And right now, we're, I mean, education in general nationwide, but also specifically in Vermont, is really a crisis situation. There's fewer people going into it, the field. There's fewer people graduating with degrees in the field. Um, and as we know around here, in Vermont in general, but specifically in our region, there's not a lot of housing either. Um, so people are, if they're not living locally, it's hard to just come here and drop in and buy a house. There's not that many of them, if they are for sale, they're not generally affordable for someone who's making an educator salary. So like, there's a lot of different dynamics at play. Right. Um, but I, I mean, I feel like we've done due diligence to, to do the work. We have have hired principals in Wardsboro and then hopefully tonight the board's approval in Townsend. So it isn't like we haven't found any people out there, but no one has applied for this position. How did you find those? The same way I just described. Yeah. No, no individual outreach through listservs and the like. Okay. No, no, I mean, yeah, it's not typically our works in, in education, but I mean, but no, we haven't done that yet. I should have started with, could you state your name? Sorry. Oh, Jessica Pollock. <laughs> Jessica Pollock, thank you. Thank you. And yes. Hi, if Chrissy Haskins. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to preface my comments with, um, I think you all know, I've been fighting for Jamaica school. Um, and over the past few months, we've been spending a lot of time <laughs> doing this, but Something when Bob came last week, you know, we talked about this. Realistically, who is going to apply for a job in a school that if you do the basic amount of research and look at the last month of board minutes, two months, three months of board minutes, and see that the board wants to close our school, they've been talking about it for months now, you've been talking about it for seven years now. Who is going to apply for a job here when it's a sinking ship? And there are so many other positions. Bob, I don't know if you happen to know how many teaching positions we have open in our SU right now. Not that many. I think the kindergarten one might be the only vacant full-time one. Do you know how many are like, maybe you don't know how many in Southern Vermont, Ballpark? I mean, there's still there's still vacancies out there, I mean, but not like there was two months ago. It seems like if you're a teacher, you kind of have your choice right now where you want to go. Yeah. Why yeah. would you come to the sinking ship? Well, one aspect. Even if, take the term sinking ship, what you're asking is not just a teacher to teach three or four grades, but you're asking them to also be a principal. In the day and age of the single teacher in the one room classroom are over folks. The, uh, the responsibilities of being an administrator and a principal are enough for a full-time job, but then you're asking them to teach not just one grade, but you're asking them to teach three grades. That's an incredible task. And I'm sure our former principal will tell you, it's a lot to ask of one person. We're not big enough to have a separation of an administrator and two teachers. We do not enough, what, 20, but, only two percent. If we did have an administrator with a part time, yeah, yeah, we would require a point two for a one day a week equivalent of a principal. So who's going to take that job? I mean, so and, and to that's that our end, dilemma. I mean, we did. I did a pretty thorough search because that was one of the options that the Wyndham board wanted to explore was having two teachers and a part time principal mm -hmm. back in the fall. And we did do a pretty thorough search, um, reaching out to retired people, combing the networks through the principal association. Um, people who are working as mentors in Wyndham County trying to find, like, is there someone that would love to step in and do a day a week? And uh, no, there was, there was none. But again, different school, different community, but like, no, there wasn't any interest in that. Yeah, the times. Okay, I, I think you were first, but okay. and then, yeah, if you could say your name. Uh, Kirshna Mercier, and I just wanted to. I don't know if this is a next step question, but following up with what you said, with having, I think what Bob said last week was like 23 students is what we'd have here next year. What would be the difference of having 
a small like teacher to student ratio versus me sending my kids to Townsend that already has like a pre-K of 10, 15 to one teacher. Like, yeah, there's more teachers, but there's more students. It's a ratio type thing. I'm, I'm confused. Let me jump back on the, on the numbers, throw it out. So right now the projected enrollment K to five is 11. 11. Pre-K okay. is nine. Okay. That's the projection right now for next year. So a total of 20 pre-K to five kids. But typically that's been done, or, well, pre-K when it was here would be three different classrooms. One for the pre-K, one for the lowers, and one for the uppers. Or they were divided by content, however they want, want chose to do it. Um, but the pre-K teacher we have, they're, we're moving a room from Townsend, that was the original plan. So it's not like we don't have staff for that position, we do. So it's just the two teaching positions that we don't. I thought that we had a few people who were interested in the position. Um, I, I thought there was a, a man that we had found that maybe was interested, and didn't he talk to to you, Monica? And did it not go any further? Okay, a gentleman. Yes. Uh, anybody that reach out to, reaches out to me, I ask them to go ahead and apply online to you to go and ahead and apply. We also, I thought, had a, an employee here who was interested in the position. And somebody else was just applying the other day for a teaching position. So we have zero applicants right now. The one who was internal withdrew their name. And there's been no other activity for applicants since. So if people have had conversations, they're not applying. So. The one that withdrew their name before, was that just a, a lady the other day, a couple days ago? No, this was. No. No she said a month, a month she, plus ago. Yeah. She said that she had applied online, but part of it wouldn't go through. So she was going to yeah. to try again, doing like, it. Uh, everyone has. But you're, you're what saying, I'm saying that there was. No yeah. You're saying there was an applicant, but they withdrew. So you did have an applicant. Several months ago, yeah, a month and a half ago, but they withdrew pretty quickly. Yeah. And they weren't also licensed in either of the two areas we would need to be a teaching principal. You need an elementary license. And a principal license, and they didn't have either. So, I think I saw behind Karen. Yes. I'm Rachel Warren. I'm. I have a three-year-old. She'll be in pre-K next year. I went to multiple schools just scouting because my kid is. I think all of us parents think our kids are really bright, <laughs> but. I was really attracted to Jamaica because of the grades that are all in one room. That's the reason we're here. So if this is not going to be an option, we're homeschooling. That's really unfortunate because I myself am a business owner. My husband's a business owner. And it's, it just makes life pretty impossible to not have pre-K options here. Um, and just all the hearsay about what's closing and what's not, it's, it's hard to keep straight now. So as a parent of someone who's just coming into the school system, this is alarming. Mm -hmm. And that's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Hi, I'm Jean Goldberg. Um, I'm a retired K-12 teacher with a dormant license. I gave it up years ago. And I'm here at this meeting to ask the board, individually or collectively, what your intention and focus is. Because what I hear is, we need a license, we need to fit the regs, we need to have so many kids, we need to have this, that, and the other thing. When the truth is, from my mind, we need to honor the children first. What their needs are, how they are to grow, what they're interested in, how they learn, most importantly. I have a K-12 through dormant license from years ago. I was certified in moderate special needs, and I have worked in many systems. What I'm gonna to suggest to the board is I'd like to hear your input about whether you're going from the top down or the bottom up, and I'd like to know if you could organize a community meeting where more people could come and express what they wish to happen at Jamaica. Thank you. So 
so you're, just after the chair, I don't know. Okay, so you're, you're asking what our intention is? Uh, As I explained, I'm yeah. hearing, we need applicants, we need to fit the rules, we need to do this according to the state, we need to do this for so many kids, so much money, whatever it is, when really the truth is we need to educate the youth in our community. I now live in, in Jamaica, so I'd like to know if the board can organize a meeting where honestly there could be a discussion about what the community thinks it needs, not particularly what the state demands or asks. Okay, well, this is a board meeting and I thought all this I mean, I, what I could say is that the, the school operates under the direction of the superintendent from, from the licensing standpoint. I would not recommend a model that didn't have licensed people. I don't know if that's what she's describing or not, but I mean, for me, when she talks about the rules and regulations, they have to be followed because it's on me as a superintendent to ensure that they're followed. Can you it's, get an exception to the need to have a license? Excuse me, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir. We need to recognize you. So he's, not, he's not done his comment. Okay, go ahead. So just say that. So I would, I would not recommend a situation that didn't have licensed people in the building, obviously. So that, I don't know if that is in conflict with what she's describing or not. I'm not really sure. But I just want, like, that's, it is important to understand what the kids' needs are, but we also have to follow the rules around what the state requires. So that, that's all I want to say. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Did, sorry. Did anybody else have anything, any comment on that? No. Well, I guess. Go ahead. We're here to take public comment now. So you're asking for a meeting to have public discussion. So please. That's what we're doing. My name is David. I live up in Pikes Falls. And my question is, is it possible for us to hire staff that are not meeting the state licensing requirements, albeit temporary or, you know, emergency or whatever you want to call it? Yeah. So it is possible to have a provisional licensure in the state of Vermont. Um, the problem is that your entire staff is provisional. You have, to have, you have to have a licensed staff with someone mentoring a provisional person. So let's say, for example, you had a, a teaching principal who was had a valid teaching license and a valid principal license. Your second candidate for the second position could very well be a second career person, a provisional licensee, someone going through what we call the peer review process to get an alternative path to licensure. Absolutely. You can't have two, both provisional licenses. You have to have at least one person who has the, the full license. So. And then obviously it would make sense that the principal would be the one that has the full license, not the opposite direction. You can't, someone who's not a principal can't mentor a principal. So. I have a question. Uh, okay, we have not gotten out in the Zoom land, so yes, let me, uh, was that Clara? Yes. Clara, what's yeah. your last name? Robinson. Clara Robinson. Rob okay, go ahead. Yeah. So how, how easy, I mean, I'm saying every town, every town needs a school. Otherwise, they're basically, how are they going to attract people to come to Jamaica? They're looking for a place like the young lady just said for her child to go to school. They also need a library. They also need, they need certain things, a, a store, whatever, to be a town. And the, the woman that we just spoke mentioned, you know, what does a community want? It's more what we really need. We need a school and we need to have the backing of the total board and whatever. But when you say provisional, how how easy or is that knowledge out there so people know that they may how they may apply? How how easy is it to apply? You said online. Is that the only well applying for the position is through the online uh, portal through our website. Um, provisional applications have to be submitted by the superintendent to the agency of education. And you have to demonstrate that candidate, if it's, if it's a teaching job, they have a bachelor's degree minimally, and that they have a two year plan to achieve licensure through the, the two years of their provisional license. So that is possible. Um, and it is also possible to get a provisional principal license. Uh, typically, people that do that are people who are in a program that year and are going through the track as they, as they get that um, certification. And so they're the provisional until they finish the coursework is typically how that works. Um, the principalship does not have 
uh, peer review approach like a teacher would have. It's just track isn't, avail isn't available for administrators. Um, so it is complicated, but it's not impossible. Um, is, so, there yeah. a way, is there a way for you to make that more known to possible applicants? I mean, we're asking it, and maybe somebody's hearing it, but I'm just saying, is there a way for you to make that known? I mean, we can put it in an ad, include it in the advertisement, that that's, that's possible to do so, for sure. Um, then it, I ask that you do. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much common knowledge among people in the education field, because as I've mentioned to the board in the past, we've had, I think this year in the SU, there was probably 15 or 18 provisional licenses across the SU in all of our buildings. Um, it's commonplace, it's, it's, it happens. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, adding that to the language uh, is certainly possible. And, and the only thing I would say, like, I, I, yes, absolutely. And I, I would be nervous about a school that where you have too many provisional licenses because I'm not sure you're getting the educational expertise that a licensed teacher would provide. So it's a, it's a catch-22 in that regard. It's, it's a tough one. So, so. But it might open the door for some people, and especially state-to-state um, -state regulations vary. Somebody moving into you know, the state of Vermont might be different than Massachusetts or wherever they're coming from. If they know that that's a possibility, you might attract somebody. Yep. I'm, just Vermont, talking, I'm just saying pull out all the stops. I'm being yeah. I hear you. Um, yeah, Vermont actually has loosened up their reciprocity standards in order to get more people to come in from other states, uh, whereas, like you mentioned, some states it is tougher to, to work through the reciprocity process, but Vermont is actually a lot easier than it used to be. Thanks, Blair. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, before I just I... want to ask Bob to follow up on something else that he was talking about last week in regard to that discussion. Okay, before we do that, I just want to make sure, does, since it would be your second comment or question, does anybody else have a comment or question before I jump well, back to Well, I do, but it's kind of long, so Chrissy can go first. Well, we have two minutes for you, so did you want to... And, and if you could say your name. You, want me to, okay. you go first. Bob, last week when you were here, we were talking about the provisional licensing. Mm -hmm. And you talked about some specific unique circumstances here at JBS that, that would require you know, some experience to make sure that there's a quality education. And as a parent, I think that's really important because I want to make sure that there's a qualified teacher teaching my child. Um, particularly in this environment. So could you kind of re-explain yeah. that for the group today? Sure. Um, I think it was actually Monica that, that brought out the point, but I agree with it wholeheartedly. Um, to take someone who has never taught before, who's potentially in either in a program or is going through a peer review process and getting an alternative license, to drop them into a, let's say, a third grade classroom of 15 to 18 kids is, you know, way more manageable for them to learn how to, how to do this craft that is teaching than it is to drop that same person in a multi-age, three-grade, four-subject environment. And so, you know, one of the differences for um, Monica is that she's leaving teaching four-subject, well, this year you guys did it a little bit differently, but typically it's been four subjects of three grades to go to Leland and Gray to sixth grade where she'll teach two subjects to one grade. But that's a pretty significant difference. I would feel more comfortable, I think this is your, kind of your point, knowing that I had a really highly qualified teacher in this environment with the multi-age because of how hard it is. The range of learners in a K to two classroom is huge. From three to five is the same way. Um, they divided up by content this year instead, which is a little bit different approach, but you still have to be a master now of six different grade levels for two content areas. So like, it's a challenge, it's not for the faint of heart. I mean, it's, it's that's, it, it's hard to say, like, let's just grab someone off the street and drop them in here. Because I, I know people want the building to be functioning. They want their kids here. But it's, it's it, sometimes it might not be what's best educationally, I guess, is the best way to put that. And also the lack of other staff here. There's right, yeah, other places where there's mentors, there's people on, on staff. You drop a third grade teacher in Townsend, and there's, there's a second grade teacher, there's a fourth grade teacher, there's people around you, there's, you know, the, the supports are... are steeper as well. The teaching principal model that we've been using here for a number of years, this person's in the classroom teaching all day. They don't have the opportunity as easily to go in and supervise and mentor and coach a teacher that a teacher in Townsend or Newfane would have because that they're a full-time principal and that's what they do. 
So this is, the model is different, and it makes it harder. So. Do you think that's affecting the applicant pool because it is so difficult? Yeah, I mean, somebody mentioned that people have their choice of, of positions. Uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely a factor. It's, 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 it's a hard job. It's probably one of the hardest ones you're going to get in education in this setting because of, because of the nature of what we're, what we're expecting them to be able to do. So yeah, I absolutely think that's a factor. Did you want to go now? Yeah, um, when my time's up, um, <laughs> if there's anyone else that's got a comment, go ahead, but you could come back to me. Of course. Because I would like to, I have a lot to say. <laughs> okay. um, could you start with your name? Uh, my name is Kate. I am obviously a Jamaica resident. My, Colt, my son is Colt. He's a fourth grader here. He will be fifth grade next year. Um, for the past week, my son has not spoken to me. So I am kind of emotional. Um, I did tell him what is up at the school for next year. And I kind of gave him two options of next year. Either possibly Grafton and Dover School, uh, Athens School, sorry, or Townsend. And he does not want to go to Townsend. He's been bullied and picked on by kids at Townsend in his grade. Um, so he did not do camp for two years where he did not get services that he needs. And he hates me because he want to, he knows that I will send him to Townsend. And there's been times where the board has neglected my children to send them out of district. The town has neglected my children to send them out of district for better education. Now, Yes, this might be a different scenario, but they have never listened. Jamaica's been a better place for my children. My child, I've almost lost Colt. 10 days, it took a hospital to find out that he had meningitis. 10 days, he lied in the hospital bed with meningitis. Doctors told me he had foot and mouth disease. He was lying there, no food, no medication. No medication on his deathbed. And the doctor told me he was never going to learn. He would have to have speech all his life, occupational therapy all his life. He comes here, has one on one. He has small classes, five, six to one, seven to one kids. And he has one on one teachers, special educators that work with him. Send him to a class to a school with fifteen to one. What is that gonna do? What are you gonna do? You guys can't do it. You know, the kid is a smart kid, and this has ruined my relationship with my kids. It's ruined my relationship with my boyfriend. My boyfriend is does not go to the IEP meetings for my son. He does. He, he doesn't get the I, the phone calls from the school. Oh, he's got to be reevaluated for this. Got to be reevaluated for that. I'm the one that is sitting there at home, thinking, "Oh my God, what's going on now? What's wrong with my son now?" I'm the one sitting at the hospital every time he's got to go to the hospital. Every time I get a phone call from the school that he's missed too many days because he's sitting in the hospital because something has come up because he. Because of other things going on with him. But he's better off here. He, he'll go to Leland and Greg where the class sizes are still smaller. But he'll be still one on, he'll still get that one on one still in the smaller class sizes. But you send him to Townsend. And they're going to be 15, 18 kids to one teacher. Yeah, you got paraprofessionals in the classroom, maybe. But still, it's not going to be the same. A lot of the kids will go to Lawrenceboro. Some will go up to the mountain school, maybe. Maybe some will go over to Floodbrook. Who knows? But you're going to take the kids away. You're going to take... I'm the only parent at home as of right now. I only have... We're, there's only one vehicle at home. And my boyfriend has to use that vehicle to get back and forth for... How am I going to get to Townsend to get my kid if he's sick? 
my kid is prone to getting sick because he had meningitis. His immune system ain't the way that all other kids' immune systems is. I have to send him to school even if he's sick. Because I don't want DUCF or the sheriff showing up at my house. Oh, your kid missed too many days of school. Because I've had that happen once before, and I'm like, you know what? What do you want me to do? The kid puking all over the school? I can't do it all by myself. But you guys are sitting here, oh, well, you know what? We're going to send your kid out to Townsend School. That's not fair. All these people here... A lot of, I can't say all, but most of these people here, there might be single parents. The, the young lady that was here, her boyfriend and her husband are small business owners. How is her and her husband gonna get, keep up with their business? You know? I mean, and you guys haven't been planning on shutting Jamaica down for the last seven years. It's been since two, the 2012-2013 school year. And yes, it has been because my older kid, stepkids were here. And that is the truth. And that's when we moved to Pennsylvania. That's when my kids entered a larger school size and they underperformed. And my kids had to join a smaller school. And I had... And I have to transport them a half hour from where I live. And I can't do that again because I don't have a vehicle now. And how do you expect all these people, how do you expect the low income people in Jamaica to pay higher tax, education taxes to shut down this school and pay more taxes to send them to a school that they don't support? How are you going to answer that? Or how are you going to answer how, kind of going along the line, Dana had said, or um, Mr. Hazleton said, was about the enrollment. Well, when people didn't like our past uh, principal back during that school year, 2011, 2012, and 13, people thought she, pardon my language, some people thought she acted like a dictator and stuff like that. So people pulled her from the, pulled their kids out of the school system. So that's when that all started. So I just wanted to segue because I think some of the things she's getting into has to do with what some possible pathways right. might be. Yeah. And so it might be a good time if there's no other questions about the posting and the hiring for me to get into. So some people are like, well, what is she talking about in all these different schools? Mm -hmm. So I can explain a little bit more about what some of the pathways might be. Yeah. She, she's already heard the talk, so she knows right. what, what I'm talking about on this one. Okay. Um, if that's okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank um, you. Bob. Yeah. I think there was another question. Oh, another, oh, first. Okay. Um, my name is Travis Steele. Um, so if, if you're not able to hire a teaching principal, um, have you explored the options of trying to find two teachers and a separate principal? So we haven't posted that separately. Um, which we could do the, the part-time principal thing separately. However, we have no applicants for the, the, the single teacher that we have posted, that we've had posted for two weeks. So I, yes, we could try that. It might be an alternative way to do it. We did that. We, we tried to learn from the lessons up in Wyndham. We tried, we tried that in Wyndham as well. It didn't yield any, but again, this is not Wyndham, so we right. could try that. Um, I'm nervous about that only because I don't know, because we don't have any for the first job. So. Now we would need two, and we would still have zero for that one. So that would be. Uh, I, I understand challenge. your logic, but yeah. what it sounds like, and I don't mean to be accusatory here, but what it sounds like is, oh gosh darn, we tried. Golly gee, just couldn't make it happen. And to me, that doesn't sound like what a superintendent should be should be doing, or a board of education. They should be saying, we'll figure it out. We're not quite sure how but we'll try a whole bunch of different things and not just kind of go, gosh darn, better luck next time, everybody. Because that's the vibe that I would be willing to wager the majority of the people in this room would accuse this group as a whole of yes. saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I, can I just follow up on what Travis mm -hmm. said too? My name is Kate. Um, Kate Logan. 
is when our kids first came, there was a, there wasn't a principal. There was a part-time principal who was overseeing, I think, Newbrook and Jamaica. So have you explored that option again of using one of the principals that's already in the district and bringing them back? Because that seemed to work pretty well. From, from a parental perspective. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't super done then. But my understanding is it didn't work super well um, for either the other school or at Newbrook. But I did look at that But it's a band-aid until you find something better. Sure. We still need a second teacher. And yeah, actually, we still need two more teachers yeah. if that person's going to step in. So, yes. Um, but then I, you're not trying to find somebody that's teaching three grades and acting as a principal. Which is going to scare more applicants away, in my opinion. Yeah. Anybody around here knows that you guys haven't been really fighting for the school. so. And I would also just add on to, I, I understand the difficulty of finding teachers to teach multiple grades. One of our kids is enrolled in the Montessori school in Brattleboro, and that's where he goes. So this is, and this is one of the things that attracted me to Jamaica was the inter, the, the mixed age groups. And it was kind of like that Montessori method where the kids are exposed to different ages and they're learning a lot from each other. And um, I would just invite you to maybe explore how these Montessori schools find their teachers. Because this could be an attractive position for somebody who is a Montessori school teacher. Which is where I work, and we've had lots and of And they have a lot of staff and applicants. The, the, the licensing requirements are very different, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. 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 So but there is a, and, and the pay is worse. Sure. <laughs> There's all sorts of trade offs. Yeah. 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 But they do, you know, the licensing requirements are not the same as those requirements. Yes, you have that. Uh, Sarah was well. Um, would it be possible to move one of the teachers from the other schools back to Jamaica? Mm -hmm. Because I know we lost teachers when we merged. So if we could move them out, couldn't we bring them back? So yeah, I mean, that was that was mentioned uh, in an earlier conversation as well. And one of the challenges there is still to fill the job somewhere else, and the person could refuse to follow that assignment. In which case, now you have two vacancies, or you only had one. So yes, that's a possible solution. But we don't know what that would do. Have you asked? Oh, yeah, Te teachers in the district are well aware of the openings. <laughs> yeah, uh, we send out to them on a regular basis. Here's the openings. Here's what's out there. Um, I, I don't think it's it's something that people like again going from a single grade to, to do the multi grade. There's just not the interest. I agree that I think there's that for some people that could be a really really good match, but it's not it's not in the interest of people who we currently have. So you run the risk of having them then leave and go get a job in another district somewhere else because we're forcing them to go to a place that might not be geographically ideal for them, you know. But we could, we legally could do that. Contractually, they, we, they work for West River District. So you could take anyone from Newfane, from Townsend, and you could reassign them, absolutely. But I, I'm not sure that's the best plan, um, so. Can I go, even though I've gone cool. once before? Uh, you had a question, and then we can go to each other. Yeah. yeah. Mindy Bean. Mm -hmm. um, I hear all, all of this, and I, all of these ideas that are being put out. I do, I do want to say I'm very sad about this situation. I love this school. I do feel it has a Montessori feel. Um, and there may have been a missed opportunity to kind of um, present it as such, and maybe get teachers and get staff based on it being a Montessori kind of, it's a very highly sought after type of school. Um, but as we stand right now, we only have what, 12 days to put out all of these ideas that are coming forth. And in reality, as sad as I am to even say this, but in 12 days, are we gonna be able to accomplish any of this stuff? You know? And where does it leave the kids that are in the school? I'm here scrambling, trying to find what school my kids are gonna to go to next. I'm in a court battle because, you know, my ex doesn't agree. And those 12 days for me are essential to know what I need to do. So, as sad as this is, and I, I really, I mean, heartfelt love this school. And I think the long term, I really hope that it stays open and they could 
do maybe a Montessori method or something. It's a fabulous place. It's a fabulous campus. It's a fabulous, it's just such a missed opportunity. It's so sad. But we have 12 days and there's children here that hang in the balance, not knowing where they're gonna go. And I know my personal situation, this is like not knowing in those 12 days could cause huge problems for me. Um, we've got to figure out where they're going. And so if it's a no end situation, then I, for my, the kids, I think we need to know. If there's like a 0.1% chance that something might happen in 12 days versus, you know, the bigger percentage of not having it happen, I think the kids need to know. I think I need to know. I think the parents need to know because as sad as it is, and I hope that something happens with the school in the future because it is an awesome school. Um, and it would be a missed opportunity to have this school sit. A shame. Um, so I am asking personally if there could be a decision made sooner than June 10th because I need to know what I'm doing with my kids. That's it. Um, let's see. Oh, Karen, did you have your hand up? Okay. Yes. Karen and then Jess. Um, I have a couple of things. I totally agree that the constant talking about closing the school makes it very difficult for you to fill positions and to keep the, the positions that you had here. It's not fair. And, um, and that's basically the reason why you can't fill these positions. But I've been saying that at board meetings for quite a while here now, and you just keep saying, let's close the school, let's close the school. There isn't room for the pre-K in Townsend. Let's close Jamaica. But let's spend tens of thousands of dollars to build a new pre-K in Newbrook, but let's close Jamaica. I mean, this just goes on and on and on, and it's not helping. Um, Back seven or eight years ago, when the town voted to merge the, the school district, the, the schools, the grade schools, and Jamaica was very apprehensive about, uh, about all of it, and we asked a lot of questions. You had a meeting at the town hall, a couple of you board members were there answering our questions, um, and one of the questions that I distinctly remember being asked was, what happens if we don't have any teachers and what would cause you to close the school? And you said one of the benefits of merging our elementary schools together <laughs> is that we can switch the teachers, we can move the teachers. <laughs> and if there's a, a vacancy here, we can pull someone from one of the other schools. That's not happening. Um, is there any talk of taking away school choice within the grade schools? Because that has really hurt Jamaica school. We would have at least 40 students here if we had school choice this coming year. In district. Um, in Jamaica school within our district. With just Jamaica, yes. School choice within the district for elementary school. But that would help our school. I talked to a board member not too long ago who said if you had 40 students in the school, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, if we didn't have school choice, we would have those 40 students. Um, I think that this meeting and this conversation uh, should have happened a long time ago, and thank you for letting us talk and ask questions at this meeting. Um, it's much appreciated. And then I would like to go to Bob I think you were about to address the conversation that you had the other day um, with the parents and you were strongly encouraging those parents and gave them options of all the other schools around our district and where they could go and the majority of those parents 
we're certainly thinking of going elsewhere other than Townsend. Um, you said that it comes down to the board making that decision, but realistically, will the board make that decision to send all of our kids to other schools other than Townsend and Newbrook? Karen, before we jump to that, because I know you're going to yeah, definitely go into a lot of detail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jessica, was yours about the current? So I think much of what I was going to say was covered, but I'm just going to pick up on Karen's last point, which is, um, without using the word accused, it's just I think the, what resonates for the people here and for those of us who have been following it more recently, like myself, um, the level, having had to do it ourselves, the level of effort to identify that there was going to be a staffing issue combined with the public discourse, it's clear that at least our impression, distinct impression is that, that there wasn't a drive to figure out a solution to keep the school open despite um, efforts of the town. So my deep concern is that uh, the folks who have children of an age that might otherwise have come here or who are parents of current students be given options that are not single in nature, in other words, Newbrook or Townsend, that is a death knell for, for these parents. And it would be an intolerable outcome. So that was, that was where I okay. wanted to go. Thank you. Oh, oh. Uh, no, you know what, I'm good. You're good. I'm not talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little jealous, frankly. Um, oh, they call my head in. Yeah, oh, I, sorry. I, I just, I'm new to the board. I was uh, appoint, uh, elected in uh, Wyndham for the high school because we have a separate board independent for the elementary school. And we also didn't have school choice. And our school's still going to close down. And, and I'll tell you, I've been in a window for six years almost. And when I, uh, from Connecticut, when I was, and my kids are out of school, but when I moved up here, I think the town of Wyndham and you know, the, the community is what drew me to Wyndham, you know? And the school was a big part of that, even though I don't have kids in school. And there's been a fight going on in Wyndham for a while to close the school, and I opposed it even though I don't have kids there. I, the majority of the parents, it seemed like, wanted the school to stay open. But there, was, uh, there were a lot of the factors that, that Bob's talking about. It was a real, well, I can't use the word I want to use, but last year, I mean, they, they, they waited. They tried to hold off. They couldn't hire anyone until August. That person was kind of like uh, the last resort, and it didn't work out, and they ended up having to send all the kids to Townsend. That was last year, and it, it was very destructive for the kids. And, and then on top of that, we, you know, this year we, we had a vote in March, and uh, they voted to tuition students, not, not to independent schools, but to public schools. So, the town, I, I voted against that. I mean, I liked the school and I wanted it. To, I knew a lot of parents that had kids there. They loved the school for a lot of the same reasons that you all described caring about this, this school in your community. Um, but there were a lot of forces there that were didn't even have kids in school and about taxes and all this, you know. Um, there's, there's what people really want, and I mean, I am with you 100%, like I, I believe in, in the community schools. I worked in education for 31 years in Connecticut, much different education system. Just my high school that I worked in had 2,000 kids in it, so you know, it's a very different situation, but like I said, uh, I mean, I wish I could go back, I don't have a teaching degree, I had a degree in, in social work, so I wasn't able to or else I'd consider, you know, taking on a position. Anyway, I guess, you know, the, the thing I was thinking is that, um, you know, this whole idea of school choice, you could pull that back and it, doesn't, it won't necessarily change the dynamics. I mean, it would get more kids here, I guess, if they had to come here. But, uh, 
it didn't save my school in Wyndham. Um, and, and there's a lot of... She was talking about in district school In choice, district. You're talking about you're, school choice. You have outside, outside of district. Outside. I know. Right, you, right yeah. now, you have choice. Only in the district. In, in the district, district only. Oh, yeah, district but I mean, they could go to any school within... Are you talking about in... in Jamaica? In the West, in the right. West River right. Unified so Education that, District. That includes, That's your um, only choice. Townsend right. and Newbrook. Well, Wyndham didn't even have that. Wyndham was. Right, it was an independent school. Independent. So I'm, all I'm saying is that the problems that are to me, and I mean, I, I'm new to the board and I'm new to Vermont relatively, and all I'm saying is that there's very different situations. A lot of the problems are the same in these small towns, wherever you go. And I mean, I'm, I can only speak for myself. I haven't been on the board. I, it sounds like this has been a discussion that's been going on for a long time. And I wasn't here for that. But I, I can only say that it seems like systemically a lot of the problems are the same. Whether it's Wyndham, we only have 350 people in the whole town. You know, uh, we have a vote coming up in a couple of weeks whether we're just going to close the school, which is effectively closed now that we have choice anyway. So. That's all. I, I, I don't I don't want to ramble on, but that, those are some of the thoughts I had, just from a little bit of an outside perspective. And I just wanted you to know that I'm certainly listening, and I'm concerned, obviously, for everything that you're you're sharing. I just want to say, from a parental perspective, having you know Wyndham becomes much more of an attractive place because there is choice. What, what I feel like you had said yeah. earlier, it is a nail in a coffin for a parent. When you close the school and then you don't have choice. And our kids are essentially being forced to go to Townsend or Newbrook. And what I'm hearing and from other parents is that maybe there's options to go to other public schools that surround our district with the board's approval. And not to be rude, but I don't really have a lot of faith in the board to approve every kid's needs and all the parents' wishes. So it is extremely upsetting as a parent, and, I, and I'm hearing it from all the parents who have spoken tonight who are kids, have kids in Jamaica. This is, and to go back to an earlier point of what she said earlier, this is all about what, what the kids need. And as a parent, I feel like my kids are being failed. End of story. Not by the school. By the, no, not by the school at all. I love this school. Yeah. <clears throat> I, we are fortunate we have choice. Like, we, we have options within our family and within our means. Economically. Economically, and Travis works at a different school, a, an amazing school, and we opted to keep our kids here. That, I mean, we had an option to send our, all three of our kids to Hilltop. Two of them stayed here. That's huge. I, it's, I feel like the school board is failing us and a little bit the town. Can I just comment on the Wyndham? Sure. I, I just want to say that Wyndham is a very different scenario. There was a, the town was divided in half with a real driving force to close the school, half of it, and the other half to keep that open. We don't seem to have a driving force to close the school at this point. There's a lot of support for this school. But you, you said there would be 40 kids here if there wasn't choice. If there was. In district. In, in district. district. In district. So, so in other words, if you lived in Jamaica, you had to go so to So if you have, if you have, you know, eleven kids coming here and nine in preschool, basically you have half the town going to other schools, is what you're saying. Is that? Am I misunderstanding that? I'm, I'm, I'm just we trying have, to wonder. We have 109 school age children here in Jamaica. Right. Resident. <laughs> School age, okay, so pre K through 12th okay. grade. One at a time. Folks, you need to be recognized. That's the number I have. Okay. Yes, we, we are. We need yeah. help. I, I, we need to. Can we? Yeah. So, so I'll just, just, just to yeah. clarify one thing before I jump to the next piece. So over 60% to answer your question, Paul, have chosen to go to a different place school. So it's Can over I just follow up on that? A number of those students have also chosen to not stay within the district. From Jamaica. Sure. Those are kids that are placed publicly in our district. 60% of the who will be remaining residents are attending school in a different district, different school in our district. 
And to follow up on that, that's because we don't have a feeder program with our pre-K because that was taken away. Please, please wait to be recognized. And did you want to? Uh, sorry. No, I, I do. Go ahead. So, I'm Sina Stevenson. Hi, all. Um, so, I do have a question about this. Can we just say for the record, first of all, that we're not going to change school choice within the district? That's not going to happen. So let's stop talking about the 40 kids. We're not going to change a 40 kids choice for 11. I'm sorry. That's the reality. Back to her point, we still only have 12 days. Can, can we circle back around to what we are proactively going to do for these parents right now? who need to figure out what to do next. I think that's a great segue. All right, so um, what I shared with the parents um, last week was there's a couple different ways this could all play itself out. Um, so track number one, which is clearly preferred by a lot of folks that we find some candidates, school stays open, we have 11 kids in K to five, we have a nine in pre-K and school operates at 20. We have the staff. So that's like, that's plan A, all right? Um, short of plan A, the other alternatives would be um, the, the school board, in fact, cannot close the school on a permanent basis without having a vote of the townspeople. So that's one thing everyone has to be aware of. The school board does not have the authority to make a permanent change to Jamaica's operation, all right? They can choose to ask the town to vote on that matter at some point. And I was, and I think, you know, the long-term planning thing, the other thing I talked about, the other track that's happening may lead that way. I don't know, all right? That's still ongoing. So take that off the table because that's not related to next year. The track that's left is the school board can, with approval from the agency of education, temporarily do something at the school. That something could range from closing it for the year, it could range from closing it K through five for the year and leaving the pre-K here to see what could happen. Um, I, mean, I guess that's really the only two options, I guess. If you had one teacher, maybe you're operating a pre-K through two. You still need a principal. But like we don't, at this point, have the candidates for that. So you're, either, you're kind of either leaving pre-K and bringing the staff from Townsend to do that, which was the plan all along, before the crisis of the hiring began, or you're closing it the entire thing. And again, it's temporary for the year. Where it goes from there depends on a lot of factors. It sounds like there's a lot of energy around conversation. There's energy around different models. There's energy around thinking differently about how it happens. There's still the long-term planning thing going on. So like, that's a separate issue. And what I said to the parents is I know, and people in Wyndham said this, if it closes temporarily, it will not reopen. And I understand that that's the sentiment, and I, I get that. But they don't have the authority to do that. All they have the authority to do is to close it temporarily. So let me play that a little bit out to show, to talk about what that, what would happen if you do that, which I think is what these guys are hoping to have some finality around. If the board chose to do that, they would have to, in essence, write a letter to the Secretary of Education asking for permission, in essence, or a blessing, I guess permission is the wrong word, but they, they give us a formal blessing that that's, um, that that's within the realm of, of what's needed for district operations because of no staff. Um, and the secretary would then bless it or not bless it, right? Um, and then that we would begin sort of phase two as to now what do we do with the kids, okay? Phase two, what do we do with the kids? So yes, because we are a district, kids could, families could choose either Newbrook or Townsend. And I get for convenience sake, maybe some of those are better than others, maybe neither of them are good, right? So what I said to the parents is, given all that, given that scenario, and Townsend, I've heard comments about it being full, can absorb every single kid in this building without a problem. The biggest class it would have, if every single kid went to Townsend would be a class of 21, which feels big when you're, that's bigger than your entire school was this year, but it's not big in the scheme of things. So it's, it's, it's a normal sized classroom, all right? The, the, the rest of the classroom would all be in the, in the mid to high teens, all right? So they could absorb that, no problem. Um, so if that were to happen, uh, what I said to the parents is there is another statute that gives parents the ability to request from a board the ability to send their kids 
In other words, the board would have to agree to pay tuition to an adjacent district's public school only. All right? So you look around just to identify the adjacent districts, and I named them all for the parents the other night. Um, there are six of them, um, adjacent districts. However, all of the ones that are actually touching, that it might be arguably more convenient, because that's the second part of this, part of the argument to the board is, my kids' education can be more conveniently furnished in this place. So you have to, you have to, be able to make that argument to the board. So, <coughs> um, geographic. geographic consideration is the, is the language in the law. And this is uh, Title 16, uh, Section 821, if you're following the law home. Um, Floodbrook, which is part of the Taconic Green District, is a bordering district to, ta to, to Jamaica, obviously, in the West River. Um, and the River Valleys District with Wardsboro is also an adjacent district with a public school. Um, technically, Marlboro is also adjacent to the West River District through New Fame. Ratterboro's district is also technically adjacent. Westminster is also technically adjacent. And Athens Grafton is also technically adjacent. I think we can all agree those there are challenges around those schools being more geographically convenient for a kid. But and then there are three places that don't operate who are also adjacent to you, Windhall, Stratton, and Wyndham now. So like those places, because they don't operate public schools, they would not be part of the statute. So parents could, if, this, if the board chose to do this temporary measure for a year with the blessing of the Secretary of Education, interim Secretary of Education, mm -hmm. yeah. they could petition to the board um, to have their particular individual case considered for tuition to be paid to one of those other places. Now, I, I don't know what the board would do. My sense is, is that the board wants to try to do what's best for families, okay? I also know that because this is a temporary situation, as we're going into it, you'd be talking about a temporary situation, most likely. If you were to ask for longer term, they could agree or not agree with that part, but we're talking about one year. We don't want to go into it thinking that it's the end. We want to go into it thinking that, what are we doing next year? We also recognize, or I recognize, that the burden of having a kid move from Jamaica to another school and then move back to either Jamaica or another school is problematic. It's a lot of transition, and that's not really good for kids either. But that's, that's where we're at right now as far as the options. So parents, what I encourage parents to do at that meeting was to think about their situation. Think about, some of them mentioned, what, to drive by Warsboro to get to Townsend School. And I was like, well, that's a pretty good argument with the board that's more convenient for you to go to, to Wardsville. And then petition the board to, to pay the tuition to River Valleys. So those are, those are the scenarios I described um, for the families. Um, I encourage them, as, as a parent myself, that if it were me, I'd be already having those conversations with those schools. I'd be checking to see, are they full? Do they have space? Can I do a tour? Can my kids see it? Like, what would the teacher, who's the teacher? Like, I would start to gather information. Because in the end, at some point, if we don't have staff, we don't have staff, all right? And despite the idea that there's lots of creative ways that we could find staff, the reality is it's almost the end of May and we don't have any applicants. So I just want to be prepared to make sure that the kids are taken care of in whatever that looks like. And so that's why I wanted to share that information with the families, which is what these guys are talking about um, tonight. So let me put that aside for a second. The other side is the pre-K. We have a staff for pre-K. They're at Townsend currently, all right? And, and this, the pre-K room was not being moved based on some rumors because Townsend was overflowing. It was being moved to Jamaica because there is a classroom being used in Townsend, which is not a normal classroom size. And as kids progress through, it's not gonna be big enough, the room itself. But it's not a normal size room. It's a very small room. It's like a special ed intervention space, really, that's been used for a whole class. So the idea was that if the pre-K room came to Jamaica, then that room, whatever grade that is, first grade or whatever it is, could then move into the vacant pre-K room, and then that room could be used for intervention. It's not that it's overflowing and they can't handle the number of kids. It's simply a matter of that particular room isn't really ideal for educating a grade level of kids together. So we approached the board way back, well, way back, I mean, it was February maybe, I don't remember. Um, proposing the idea of moving this. Prior to us knowing the staff wasn't going to be here, 
prior to us knowing what their enrollment projections were, and certainly prior to the long-term planning being complete because it's still not complete. And we asked, and the board was like, yeah, sounds like a great idea. So we have moved forward with that plan. Monica's gone through the initial licensing process um, to make sure that we can get the room ready, um, and, and that's the plan. So we, we can staff that. Part of what I want to share with the board, which is new information to me today, because there was some conversation at a previous meeting around what do you need to have at a pre-K? Because you have to have a principal for K-5 to five kids, and you have to have a director for a pre-K. What I learned today from the state is that that director can be the teacher. It's just that it's a lot of extra work. So either you want to set up that teacher with some spare time in their day, or maybe stipend them for extra time to do the work beyond their day, but they can serve as a director. We would not need, if you kept the pre-K here and moved the K-5, gave people the choice of new thing in town and then they could apply for the other options if they chose, and kept the pre-K here, you could just move the staff here from Townsend and, and operate for a year, pending what the next steps might be longer term. Should give the opportunity to vision it out a little bit, think a little bit of what you want, have long-term planning report out, what their next steps are, and as a board, think about what's, what's the next best step. So that's where I'm at, and as I told the parents, I am asking the board to make a decision sooner rather than later. So um, if it's tonight, it's tonight. If it's not tonight, I would recommend another special meeting very, very soon with a very clear agenda that talks about a temporary closure on the agenda so everyone's really clear about what that is. Um, and I think our advice from our attorney and our executive session that would certainly was in line with that. So um, that's where I think we're at. Okay. So I'm happy to take questions or comments about that or yes, <clears throat> anybody else want to do that. So recognizing the time is yeah right. time is ticking. Yes. Uh, so special meeting, two options. Is that what essentially what we would be looking yeah, at? Yeah, if the board's appetite is to either move out K-5 or to close it yeah. entirely on a temporary yeah. basis, we would keep yeah. saying that, temporary basis, One. that they would want to warn a special meeting to do that, which requires 24 hours notice to, to make that happen. And then parents would have an answer, and then they could have the opportunity to do their research in business schools and do that sort of thing and then come on the 10th with their request if they were going to access it, uh, Section 821. So that, that's sort of the path that I kind of laid out for them and, and how they thought were thinking about it. Um, the board can also direct me to keep looking. The, the third option, right? Yeah. Which is we just keep looking and unfortunately the parents don't find out for, I mean, if we were to say keep looking until August 1st and we didn't find anybody until August 1st, then the parents would find out in August that we had no options. Yeah, well, that so really three good. options that we're talking about. Either keep yeah. looking. For, yeah. some, for some determinate set of time. And I think what my argument would be on that is I am, you know, so I became superintendent on July 1. And in June, prior to being superintendent, I was in a window. Well, they had no applicants trying to figure out what they were going to do. And they wanted to keep looking in mid-June. And I think Paul happily described sort of what happened. It's been well documented. Um, so that I'm, okay, so I'm only a first year superintendent, but I'm a little gun shy about similar type of hire late in the season. What the quality of that candidate will be, never mind the other pieces that people have mentioned around the desirability of a multi age and all that. I'm nervous about that. Well, it also leaves the parents kind of, it leaves the parents hanging, wondering what's going to happen. Yep. And it forces the administrators late to scramble around how that's gonna play itself out. We gotta pull the parents, where are you gonna go? They have to come to you. Meanwhile, they have to find out if they want to go to Wardsboro, is there space in Wardsboro, for example? There's nobody in Wardsboro in July. There's no staff there. So it's like, now how do we how do we deal with that? So it's like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of challenges to delaying it, plan C, as you mentioned, or D, I'm not sure which plan it was, but a lot of challenges to that, logistically. Lindsay. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that um, we as a board are always thinking about the kids first. And I know that there's been a lot of conversation about, um, but maybe not my kid, you don't feel like I, I, we're considering your personal needs or your specific child. Um, but we really do want the very best education for every kid. And we really um, want everybody to be able to voice their concerns 
to us about what they see that best education being. Um, and I personally feel pretty strongly that both parents and their children would benefit greatly from knowing soon what to expect because change as we know is difficult and the more time that families have to prepare themselves for any change that may be happening the better off they'll be so that's i just wanted to say my little piece there <laughs> If you really cared about our kids, maybe, just maybe, if you talked about closing Jamaica for, okay, I'll go with you talking for the last seven years about closing Jamaica, maybe you could have hushed, said it in hush, or talked amongst about it yourself or within the long-term planning committee in hush until you had a definitive answer. Then that would have kept maybe families here at Jamaica and we would have had families and kids here at Jamaica. Because with the, kid, with the, with the not knowing, kids are still not knowing, might move to Wardsboro, might move to outer district. Because, and like the superintendent last Thursday was talking to myself, Josie, Chrissy, Karen, our kids, if we move out of the district, go, those schools go up to sixth grade. We go up to fifth grade. Those kids that go to sixth grade, those inter out of district schools, those kids aren't going to go to Quaid, and those kids aren't going to go, aren't going to have graduations. Like the kids in this district look forward to every fifth grade year. It used to be sixth grade year. I remember kids used to choose uh, casino night. I remember it used to be a big thing at the town hall. Right in the back of a fire truck or right in the back of, it used to be Salo's big yellow truck. The kids were always so excited to ride in something out from the top, just from the town hall to the school. It doesn't happen anymore because you guys talk, talk, talk about turning the school down. And that is why you guys don't care about the kids anymore. You guys do not care. And what is so funny? Because it is true. Because I've been on these boards and I've talked to these people and I know how much they care about the kids. You're specifically talking about your instance and I get that. You're in your pain. I completely understand that. But don't lash out at these people. They work incredibly hard for no money for the kids in this district. You're right. They are elected officials. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. They, yeah. But there's no need to laugh. One at a time. Sorry, and it's sorry. not. There's no need to laugh. Okay. But but it's true. You guys don't care. Drew Hazelton was there when he drew withdrew his kids from schools because Laura Hazard. He thought that she was a dictator. Okay. okay. And he was the click of the school. Okay. Is this a? Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Go ahead, Chrissy, and then I don't know, Claire, if you were trying to raise your hand. No. <laughs> okay, Chrissy, thank you. Um, it is. It's sad to see what's happened here. A small group of people decided prior to the merger that they didn't like JDS or they didn't like our former staff, and they were going to get out. They proceeded to make this happen with no thought or concern of what the long-term consequences would be for our school or what those consequences would mean to the future families that are here tonight. Those few destroyed our school for their own interests and led us to where we are tonight. This board and past boards, as well as the SU, also played parts in where we are now by not utilizing due diligence and thoroughly thinking through these decisions and considering the consequences of the decisions. Parents over the last several years have been told by other parents not to send their kids to JDS because the school is going to close. This hurt us even more. JDS is a great school. My son has thrived here. He's in kindergarten. I agree with Mindy that it's an opportunity lost. Um, some may think Townsend is the best option for children in our district. We don't all think that. My child would be in the largest class out of both the elementary schools, 21 kids in first grade. 
This is a huge change from his current class of five. I personally do not think a ratio of 21 to one is gonna provide a better quality education than five to one. I am also one of the parents that would drive past the Wardsboro School to get to Townsend. Um, in regard to the temporary closure um, scenario, if I'm gonna move, in all reality, if I'm gonna move my child to a different school next year, it's not gonna be Townsend. Um, he's gonna stay in the school we move to. I'm not gonna keep bouncing him around from one to a school to another. And I have a feeling that many feel that families are, are in the same boat. Um, if we move our kids out, you're gonna lose those students. We're not coming back to Jamaica, unfortunately. So if you were to reopen here, we're not gonna come back. You just can't. So you're starting from zero. And even that's a long shot because the board keeps talking about closing Jamaica for the long term anyway. And I echo the comments of others that request a decision sooner than later. Thank you. I would second that and agree with that as well. Okay, uh, you need to be recognized, sir. Sorry, who's that? Paul. Okay, and I think we had Claire. Did you have a question? And I'm seeing no. Sorry. Go ahead, sir. All right, so my name's Zach Hall. I second and agree with what you said. Oh. Okay. Yes. Uh, without diminishing the sincere emotion around um, the changes that look imminent or may be imminent for the school, I would like to crisp up um, what you what you started out with because I wasn't in the room with the, the parents that you were able to reach. And you're gonna have to distill that down to um, a request you as superintendent, I believe will be putting forth to the board for their consideration or suggesting the board create a formal resolution around. So from my perspective, you know, it could be pre-K here or pre-K not here. Um, so that is because those are new students to the school, kind of less uh, heartache around that decision. And then for K through five, what I need to hear is what, what would that resolution look like so that the board would support each of those parents identifying the school that is in an eligible, uh, an eligible public school, um, most likely Athens or um, Wardsboro, assuming that there's room that they, the board would, the resolution would be the board is supporting that effort and the parents can make those forays, presumably with your assistance or the assistance of the members of the board, and that the board would use its um, skills and authority and what, however you want to put it, to get those moves, albeit for a year, might be longer, but for a year, would support and bring that to the state level so that those requests could be blessed. Is that what you're, is that what you envision suggesting to this board and is that what the board envisions making available to the parents and of the K through five current yeah, students? I wasn't really at the very beginning, but I, I definitely You mean about the pre-K versus? Well, no, I know that's a, that's a obviously okay. a decision okay. point. It was just the beginning part. Well, I, I, so my, my suggestion to the board is, that they soon, if not tonight, very soon, then you can have another special meeting warned specifically for that purpose, 24 hours notice, um, to make a decision about whether pre-K would be included or not. Right. Or, yeah, I guess, or not. I guess that's the two, those are the two right, right, right. binary option there. Um, and um, I, think, I think you could, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember, Sean had talked about the idea that you could have that you could describe to the secretary in the request that we are the board is open to hearing on a case by case basis mm -hmm. parents accessing other schools through 821. Mm -hmm. So I think that if that's the resolution you're describing, and then yes, I would I would support that. That language is kind of anemic from well, my perspective. Presumably, right. it could well, be something the statute, the statute to give parents specific. a bit the more. Very specific. It can be black. It's going to be a case by case basis. So like, there's no way around that part of it. I am more than happy to talk and meet with parents separately to help them craft their requests for sure and help them with that element and Monica and I can do that together, whatever's easier for families. Um, but I can't, I don't think I can recommend a blanket. That, and that's not what I'm asking. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm asking if the minutes were to reflect that the superintendent is anxious to help parents 
who have identified or help them identify an alternative, which may not be Townsend or Newbrook, um, because Newbrook is really difficult for most of, of Jamaica. And Townsend has historically been not consistently the right school for other for other pa current parents. So I'd want the minutes to reflect that the board is going to, I don't care if it follows the statute. I'm a lawyer. I'm, I'm fine with it. The, the resolution well, following the statute, but the minutes, the minutes would demonstrate yeah. that there is a heart, right? There's heart on the part of the board and the superintendent's office to assist these parents to find and, and obtain a spot for their students at the best school for their students. I think the parents who now were last week would tell you that it was very hard. I, I heard, we had a good conversation. I heard it was um, anemic, so that's that's why well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry, that's you heard why that. I'm here. Sorry, you heard that. Um, <laughs> I don't think that was everyone's experience. Um, but I also want to, I do want to say publicly because there's been a lot of anti Townsend stuff tonight, and I just I, I don't know where that comes from. I understand that people have feelings about places, um, but I I. And I'm not trying to push one way start over another. I'm just trying to say there's a lot of anti townsend stuff that I don't think is justified. I think if people had the opportunity to go visit it, they would actually be pleasantly surprised. If, that if being I, said, I do support conceptually the idea that people should find what's best for their family situation. Right. Decisions were made before by these same parents to be here and not Townsend, right? So we've had that choice the right. whole time. So you're talking so. you're talking about a self selecting group. It's not anti Townsend. It's this is a self-selected group that most likely, since they didn't go to Townsend, they're looking for something different for their students. Well, they liked what was here. I mean, right? I mean, that's the other side of that. They liked what was here. And we heard a lot of people talk about how great Townsend. it was. Right. Agreed, but it doesn't mean that Townsend's not providing a suitable education for kids. I, I just want to make sure. I'm saying that. Okay. Right. I'm just saying no. that that's not the Sorry. choice parents have One right. I, I hear that, but I do hear a lot of anti-Townsend stuff. I, I, I think it's, sure. it's so important not to put kind of, you know, value laden, uh, you know, assessments made. So that's not what's, I'm telling you, that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is an anxiousness to be able to have options and not feel like it's inevitable that you're at Townsend or Newbrook. That's all. So. That's what allows for, yes. You're talking about optics. You want the minutes to reflect that it feels like you're being given a choice. Or, sure. or no, I want the minutes to reflect folks, that there's. Oh, sorry, the sorry. Okay, so it be recognized. Um, <clears throat> did you want to speak next, Travis? Travis. Uh, sure. My name is Travis. Um, I, I think what we're talking about here is optics. You know, the, the impression that a lot of people have is really similar, and you can say, "Oh, that's not true," but it's a PR issue. And right now, that's. That's kind of the board's problem. I just wanted to clarify because this, you know, identifying the best school, obviously we are limited by the language in the statute. Um, you know, geographically convenient is the actual thing. And like you said when you were discussing the first option, that if Athens Grafton were the school that everyone felt was, that someone felt was the fit, that that would be a very difficult sell under the statute. And I, you know, I think the board would have a really hard time. We may yeah. be able to do something with that, but I would not want the minutes to be so broad as to make it appear that we were going to be making that happen. Thanks, John. All right. So, any other questions, comments before we? Yeah. All right, go ahead, Crystal. I wasn't sure if I should say anything, but I feel like I really need to just because I was in that school fight for a really long time, a lot differently than you guys. Um, but I really hope that the board and the superintendent are thoughtful because from my perspective, I feel like these parents are thinking they're going to be helped to craft a letter to go to a school that is outside of the district based on geography. And the reality is, 
is when you do that, they're going to open it up to the whole district, which I know from the past you guys don't do. I really don't want these parents leaving there thinking, oh, I'm going to choose Wardsboro. I'm going to choose Athens. Like, just please be very thoughtful in explaining to these parents how that process works. It is a very difficult, heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, nervous breakdown process. So please be thoughtful in explaining that to them. Thanks, Crystal. All right. Do we have any other... <laughs> Was that a request to have it explained now, or...? Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm explaining. I guess the process is to would be to craft communication to the board requesting under Title 16, Section 821, that the board pay tuition to School X because it is more conveniently, because their students' education would be more conveniently furnished there. And to explain why. Well, a couple sentences, a paragraph, I mean, it's not, right. it doesn't need to be a treatise, just I think it's an, it's an email to me, to Al, to both of us, whoever, explaining what what you're looking to do under the statute and why. And so, but I, but I would say that one thing that Crystal talked about was opening up to the whole district. I don't, this is why it's a case by case scenario. You're not opening this up to people in Newfane or Brookline to consider going to Brattleboro. That's not the intent of this. This is the intent of this consideration by the board as part of the temporary closure measure is to ensure that the families in Jamaica get what they need. This is not something that becomes an open season for the board, and because it's a case by case scenario, there's no precedent being set. You can approve some and reject some because the statute is clear about what it says. And as you point out, if you're driving by the Townsend School to go to Athens, it's very different than driving by the Wardsboro School to go to Townsend. So I just think it's a case by case scenario, and, and some people may get it approved, and some people may not, depending on what they're asking for and what the scenario is, based on where they live and what the building they're looking at. So. It's very, it is particular to where you live and the schools that are close to you. That's the whole purpose of it. And transportation. Well, that's the other piece. So transportation, you know, the West River District already transports students from Jamaica to the Townsend area, both for secondary and for primary. So like, that transportation would continue. Um, and so it, it d depends on your scenario and where you currently get a bus, whether that transportation would be available for this request. It certainly isn't going to flood park, I'm guessing. But so there's you know what I mean? Like there's good parents may have to have some some obligation on the transportation side if they're going out of district. Wardsboro maybe is a little bit different, depending on where they live, because Wardsboro's transportation is the same company that West Rivers is. Maybe there's a way to make something work there, I don't know. Um, but yeah. But I think it's gonna depend on where you live and where the schools are that you're looking at. So it is a case by case scenario. True. So if there was a temporary closure, um, transportation would be adjusted to make sure that the students could get to the district school. So anybody that didn't have means for transportation, we have a bus route now that serves that. We need to create a new bus route. What does that look like? My guess is based on what I've seen on buses, there's capacity already. But I would talk to Greg about that once we knew the numbers and who was going where from where. But yeah, if, you, if they're, I guess I would say that if they're going in district for sure, there's going to be transportation as there has been. For the students who have already choice to go to towns in the front bank, it is already a lot that goes that direction. So I don't think it's a full bus. Uh, can, uh, just to clarify, that transportation would, the possibility to continue to Newbrook were that a choice, that transportation currently exists as well? I, I mean, there's. Know. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. I think probably. it. I believe it does. I mean, the bus company is towards New Fane anyway, so like my guess is it probably does. I believe it does. So, but I, I don't have it memorized. Sorry. Can I say something, my chance? I'm sure. Lindsay. I work 
I work for West River Transportation. Oh, all right. At the current moment, we do not have um, a bus that goes to Newbrook from Jamaica. Um, we do have a bus that leaves Townsend Elementary um, that goes to Newbrook. Um, and yes, we do at the moment have a very full bus from Townsend and Leland and Gray in the afternoon. The morning, not so much. Um, but that is where it stands right now. Again, there is a bus in Wardsboro that could take some of the kids from um, Jamaica um, to Wardsboro. We could make that work. Um, but it definitely is something we would like to know as a transportation committee sooner rather than later, too, for those changes. Thanks, Lindsay. And I guess that the only other thing I want to add to this, because you guys have to figure out what you're doing and what you want me to warn or not warn, um, is that I, I know there's a lot of feelings about this. I know it's been going on, particularly the long-term planning piece, for many years. Um, I, I, I don't want people to think that there's joy in this for anybody, for, certainly not for me, I don't think for the board, um, certainly not for Monica, who's making a decision that's having an impact um, on people inadvertently. Um, this is hard stuff, and, and it's like, I don't know, I, just, I, I hope we can give each other grace on that, because it, it, there's, no, there's no ill will intended in any of this. It's just, this is, this is just great. The cards have been dealt right now. This is the situation. So we're just trying to be responsive for kids. Can I just thank the board for coming to Jamaica? Um, that I, I, I think this is very hard and a lot of heartbreak, but your coming um, made this dialogue possible, which was largely very respectful. So I just wanted to make sure that that, I think a lot of people here are thankful that you came. Thank you. So, so what do you want me to do? So, special meeting. <clears throat> Wait, should we look at our calendars? And I, I'm assuming, as you said, sooner rather than later, before the end of the month. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, based on what I'm hearing from the parents, if it was possible to do it this week, yes, people would really appreciate it, yes. right? Friday. Um, Friday night board meeting. Is that what you suggested all that? <laughs> That's a real one. Um, Thursday. Thursday is an opening for me. Don't. Okay. Uh, Thursday is the pop concert. Yeah. There's a concert Thursday night? Yeah. Thursday is the pop concert. So, I, free, what, free concert. What time is that? At? Seven. Would it be an appetite to do a meeting before? Especially if there's Zoom. Yeah. What, what time is the concert? The concert is 7. seven. I just know multiple people here have ch children that are involved in that, so. Yeah. Sign the list. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Starts at 7. Could we? Our kids have to be there at 6.30. 6 to 7? <laughs> could we? Do you think that's enough time? Yeah. yeah. Does 6 to 7 work, folks? Or do we need longer? What do you think? 5.30 to 7? As long as there's Zoom. Okay. 5 30 on Thursday the 30th. Let me just absolutely. Thank you. Um, guys, be up. Hang on. I'm just down the road. Thursday, 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 Thursday. That Leland and Greg. Yeah. 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 Bring your long chair, Paul. See you on Thursday. Show of hands Thursday, 5 30 to 7. No, Emily. No. Okay, Zoom. I, no, I have an. I have another function. I got to be at. Okay. I have to be at. I have to be at at six, so I wouldn't be able to make it. Okay. Could we do it earlier? Or no? Uh, I'm, I'd have to leave at five thirty to get to my function at six. So that's all. It's long planned. I can't do anything about it. I mean, I'm, I'm open because I work all day, so it's part of my job. Can you tell me. I am available earlier if anybody else is available earlier to make that work. I would not be at school. Okay. Okay. Here at five thirty, it sounds like you had almost every hand except for Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Emily. 
It hits him, so oh, I saw. Okay. Uh, do you want to do it at Leland Gray and Zoom? Or do you want yeah. to do just Zoom? Or? Uh, Leland Gray Leland and Zoom. Gray and Zoom. Yeah. 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 Right. Is he your question? Sure, go ahead. The procedural question is this. That whether it's Thursday at 5.30 or 4 o'clock or any of the day or any of the time, what is the intention of the meeting? So my understanding is we're going to have an agenda item to discuss possible decision around a temporary closure of Jamaica School for the 24, 25 school year due to staffing problems. Thank you. And then Thank you. to pre-K or not to pre-K? Well, I guess that's a separate question. Separate right? question, right? So that, that is what might take some time. And, I, and to be honest, like, there were a bunch of younger kids early, here earlier who people have pre-K. Do you guys have pre-Kers? I mean, I don't, we don't need to do it right now, but maybe people could communicate with us somehow, email me or Al or both of us or maybe Monica, just to get a sense of like, what's the will of the people, the people, the nine kids that were gonna be here, what do those families prefer? I don't think it's a significant difference. I mean, you have to heat the building more, obviously, and things like that, but I mean, I don't think that's a deal breaker for anybody. Since we have a few minutes, can we ask the parents that are present if if the decision was made not to have K through five here, would you prefer us to see us have pre K here or not? I mean, can we just ask that now because we have an audience full of people? <clears throat> I think I'm, yeah, the only one I'm left. Um, but for my son, I would really prefer him to be here for the smaller structure. Um, based on my experience with him already um, in a program at Stratton. Um, but I'm not opposed to going to Townsend as I already have my daughter there. So, but it is more important for me to have him here. Okay. That's true. Maybe the language of the warning includes possible motions for pre K through five and K through five and see. Yeah. And then we and we can make sure we, we're setting up the agendas to the, the families Monica has to contact information before the pre K goes for next year. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Um I do we have anything else before we want to move into executive Yeah so I do yeah another executive session for a for the potential hiring of a Townsend principal. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. Thank you, folks. Really appreciate it. Thursday Very meeting. Much. When was the meeting? Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Friday, Friday. 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 Yeah. That will be worn tomorrow during the day, so that we make the twenty-four hour timeline. And okay, and next we find out. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like they're yeah. they're, they're, they're hearing you all the time on this. Okay. okay. Yes. Thanks, man. Monica, we're going back we're to the executive session. Yeah. Yeah. Kicking you out. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, guys. There will be action coming out, hopefully, regarding it. Oh, yeah, you guys need to vote to the executive session. Thank you for letting us talk. And we don't understand.
because I'll, I'll make these. Oh, sure. yeah. Yeah. This could be done. I mean, okay. that's not true. We're still like, <laughs> <laughs> the pre K program here, even at the school, they want to see I don't Okay. Okay. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. All right. All right. So we're going to be making two motions. Uh, first motion is. Yeah, you got to make a motion. Yeah, I still need to make the motion. Yes. Okay. I move to find that premature death of public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a financial disadvantage regarding personnel and contracts. Second. Thank you, Dana. Any discussion? Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Second motion. I motion move to executive session under 1 BSA 313-1C to discuss, discuss personnel and contracts. Second. Thank you, Drew. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. We are now moving into executive session. Thank you, folks out there in Zoom land. Have a great night. Okay, we're, we're back out of executive session, folks. Uh, so I am recommending to the Lester Board the hiring of Mr. Randy Lichtenwaller as the principal of Towns Elementary School. So I'll so make that motion. Could you say that again yeah. as the principal of? Townsend Elementary oh. School. And to, have, and to have the, the board chair. And the, the, I was going to say, can we add to have the board chair to sign the contract? Oh, we should do that. that motion? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll make that. Do I have a second? So amended. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you, folks. And I'll, I will entertain that final motion. To make the motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, Joe got it. Drew got it. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. Everybody have a great night. Thank you. Thanks, Al.